Welcome to Technology and Education. Today I'm Richard Smith. And I'm Caroline Crawford. And today we are discussing a new report from the Center for American Progress, which deals with the salaries of mid-career teachers. And Define mid-career teacher for me. Oh, people who have been teaching for 10 or more years and uh, in public schools, kindergarten through, through 12. And the interesting American public schools, yes, K the, twelve. Right. The interesting finding is that uh, the salaries are extremely low. Very low. I have no response to that. <laughs> uh, that's kind of a congratulations, <laughs> duh. So yes. Uh, well, uh, well, we have to figure what is the the effect here. Well, <clears throat> the immediate effect is that the teachers have to take second jobs or maybe even third jobs just to make ends meet, especially. Uh, if they are if they are married to another teacher, for instance, or if the the spouse doesn't have a very high paying job, and they have working on the assumption someone still has a spouse, <laughs> right? Considering the stress associated with being a classroom teacher today. Uh, well, that that could be another side effect. I'm, I don't think the study actually has anything to do with the uh, divorce rates, but it is. <laughs> now it, there's it, a study. <laughs> I hadn't is, thought about that. Good point. And, you know, if you want a t uh, somebody to concentrate on his or her job, I don't think you really want that person. Having to take another job and uh, or three and to be, pay the bills, right? To pay the bills, being exhausted and being concerned about how uh, the family budget is going to be uh, made. And besides, you know, when you have two jobs, you go into the classroom to teach. Teaching is a very stressful job many times, and that Absolutely. can be you know you go into the classroom stressful, exhausted, time intensive, mm -hmm. emotionally draining. And if you go into that classroom tired. Uh, you're doing neither yourself nor your students any good, and that doesn't even begin to get in into um, the social aspects of where you're taking over their parental role in many instances. Not saying right. that you're correcting the child as much as your your emotional well, you're component the, is it, added in. You're the you're the role model for that child. And, in many cases, and uh, if you know you you can either be a good role model or an alert role model or a not so good role model, and being alert. And enthusiastic is a part of being a, a, a good role model. Well, I think you're a role model. And a strong educator. Right. So the, this is a problem. And you know, when we say um, the, uh, the salaries are low, we're talking about you know, after a uh, base salary of about. Median. Not, right. We're not talking about one state. We're talking about overarchingly throughout right. the U.S. The, let's say the base salary is about 35000 and then. For uh, mid-career? Teachers? Yes. Okay. And so, and when the add-ons and what have you, the average salary can go up to about, you know, fifty-eight thousand, and then it tops out. And this is something that I've been aware of for for years and years. Of course, every other teacher has been aware of. It's a type of profession profession where where you enter it, you you start, and your title is teacher, and you finish, and your title is teacher. Essentially, there's no promotion path within the uh, uh, profession of, uh, of teacher. Unless you're and the going salaries... into administration, and why would you want to be a classroom teacher in the first place if your goal is to be an administrator? You love teaching. You love working with the students and making a difference in their lives. Well, that's... That, and, and that's, educating them at the same time. That's catch-22. That's catch but the bottom line is that since there's no real career path within teachers, within the K-12 through teaching professor, unlike profession, unlike at the uh, university level where you start as assistant professor and work your way up to a uh, full professor, the only, <laughs> the only... Yeah, we'll leave that for another time. Yeah, that'll be <laughs> That's another, a whole different discussion. That'll be another, <laughs> another show. But the, um, the only way to, in essence, get a promotion as a uh, teacher and in order to get a salary raise is, as you said, uh, go into administration. Department and, chair, program chair, if they have them. Well, even no department chair and program chair, the the amount of money is insignificant. You really have. If at all, if, other than oh, you have a title now, you're important. Yes. Well, I just want the money. <laughs> without getting into all the details, the significant salary uh, increases come with school administration, where you start out as an assistant principal, work yourself up uh, to principal. And then go. Uh, then you become an assistant or an associate superintendent, maybe even a superintendent, which is the, of course, the highest level. But what but it for shows people is people who love being a classroom right. educator. That is, that's not even a consideration. Don't want to do that. I want to deal with my students and teach the right. students. Right. So the what it's it's contradictory. Is you you may want to remain a teacher. You may be a very good teacher, but in order to get a salary raise, you must go into. Uh, ad administration and or by the way two or three outside jobs and at the same time consider if you have mm -hmm. children if you can afford children 
then you have food stamp issues and welfare issues. Well, I actually, know people who have taken on food stamps and been on welfare while they're holding full-time job because they cannot afford to take care of their children. Well, it's, it's amazing. There, there are a lot of teachers who are on uh, food stamps. And it's not as if they're living it's, above their means. They're barely making ends meet. Yeah. Which is interesting within the United States because versus other countries, a classroom educator is not deemed a socially important role. Which I find so interesting. In other countries, you are highly looked upon. You earn the right to be a classroom educator. You earn the right to teach my children. But in the well, U.S., that is not the, the case. In, in other countries, such as Finland is a good example, it's a highly respected position, right. and it, it takes uh, some doing to, be, to become a teacher. Uh, you know, the, it takes some doing to become a teacher in the United States as well. It does, but the, the, there is no a reward associated uh, and that's what I'm talking that. about, the social aspect of it. And you are, oh, you're a classroom teacher, and I would like to talk to someone else now. I'm teaching your children. I'm a very important person. It, it, that, may be, <laughs> that may be the fact, but the, as, as you just noted, it, the, the uh, job is not held in very high esteem. As, as, esteem. And this, of course, then uh, I think uh, goes into, uh, it affects the, the uh, teaching that uh, is provided by uh, classroom teachers. And you find there's a lot of teachers who come in enthusiastically and then leave within two or uh, three years because it is the, the pressure and the low salary and the idea that your salary will never go really beyond what it is, very much beyond what it is when you enter, is, uh, is well, just too much. But even if the salary is not a, a significant component of the decision, mm -hmm. there's still the situation in the schools, and it's not necessarily... I'm sure there are amazing administrators out there, as well as collegial teachers, but there are many instances, many schools, where it is a less than desirable place to work. It is so difficult that you do not have well, the support, you don't have the materials this necessary, is, this blah, blah, blah. Is, This also is an interesting question, I think it's related to the, the idea of the uh, low, uh, low teacher salary, in, in that in the United States, teaching while identified as a profession, is not really a profession. This is an overarching personal statement. <laughs> no, this is, this is actually a fact. Uh, teachers do not control entry into their own profession, and they don't make the rules. Rules for, uh, for teaching are made uh, by people other than teachers. They're made by state legislators, and the, uh, those laws are translated into uh, 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 administrative uh, codes by the various state agencies. I'm not sure so, I necessarily agree with that statement, but I respect your opinion. Thank you. So, so in other words, it's not as if you uh, are a, a lawyer where you set your own fees for, for the services provided. And that, you know, being aut autonomous and setting your own, uh, s your own standards for, for the work that you do as part, as part of a larger organization, you know, the organization sets the standards, is something that does not happen with teachers. And that goes part and parcel with what you were saying about working conditions. Since the uh, working conditions are, in these days, uh, at a very base level, are established by the uh, high-stake standardized testing, there is a lot of pressure on teachers, which they can they That's have to yield to. That's more what I was thinking. Right. They, you I, can't teach. You have to they teach have to, to the test. They have to yield to this pressure because... Uh, they they have no alternative. They have no voice in the uh, in the process. So, with low salaries and then working conditions that are really not terribly positive, it causes a lot of people, especially at the mid-career uh, level, to leave. And that's where we're going to have to leave it right now because we're running out of time. Uh, it's, this has really been a great discussion uh, for technology and education today. I'm Richard Smith, and I'm Caroline Crawford. Bye. <laughs>